In this video, I'll be showcasing my attempt on a tile slash grid based movement in 2D. You can see here a tile selection game object is hovering over each tile based on where the mouse is. Once I click on the tile, the player will move towards it, calculate the quickest way to reach its destination. If you guys just want the project, you can go ahead on my Patreon and get it there. I'd like to first thank my Patreon supporters, Jason, Long, Muhammad, Lan, and Nicholas. With that being said, let's dive right into the video. The way I have my scene set up is with two tile maps. One being an obstacle tile map which the player will avoid and will have a rigid body 2D, a composite collider 2D and an obstacle tile map script. The other one is a normal tile map which will be used to decorate the scene with a tag tile map. I also have a game object prefab with a tile selection script. The material is semi-transparent so that the tile you are hovering is still visible. The last thing I have in the scene is a player game object with the movement script, rigid body and circle collider. This is the grid util script. All it has is a public static vector to in called world to grid which stores a world position and all this does is returns the floor to in of the world pause x and world pause y. The same concept for the other static vector to called grid to world. You don't need to attach this script to anything. The same applies for the a star script. I have a private static vector to called grid size at the top and I've also written a private class called node. We'll also have a reference to the parent node, pathfinding cost, g cost and h cost and whether it's an obstacle. The F cost is calculated as a value combining G cost and H cost, which helps determine the best path to take. Moving down to the public static find path, this is the bread and butter of the script. In here, it uses the A star pathfinding algorithm to find a path from the starting point to the target point on a grid. It opens and closes the list to explore the grid positions and calculates the cost, which then decides the best path while avoiding obstacles defined by the is obstacle method. The algorithm will continue to find the path to the target, giving back the best route and if it's shown null, that means no path is found. In the get lowest f cost node, it looks at a list of nodes and chooses the one with the lowest combined cost, making sure to prioritize that path which is closer to the destination. When calculating the h cost, it checks how far the player is from the targeted destination in the grid, whether we should be moving horizontally or vertically and ignoring moving diagonally. As for the generate path method, it connects points from the start and the end destination pretty much converting the grid position to the real world positions. Think of it as instructions for it to move on one node to another seamlessly. Lastly, the get adjacent position. This is basically straightforward. Like I said, just adding up, down, left and right as its coordinates to move in its position. That pretty much gives a brief summary of what each method does in the A star script. Moving on to the task selection script, make sure you have using unity engine.tilemaps at the top. The variables we'll need are Tile map called tile map, another tile map called obstacle tile map, a float called offset, a private vector 2 named grid size, which will be a new vector 2 storing one in both x and y, and a private vector 2 in called highlighted tile position, which is set to vector 2 in 0. In the update method, it constantly checks the mouse position in the game world and highlights a grid under the mouse. If the mouse is not over an obstacle, it will update the highlighted tile position and move the player to that position in the grid. Onto the highlighted position method, it retrieves the position of the currently highlighted tile, which then helps us see which tile is being selected. The public bool is highlighted tile click helps determine if the player has clicked on the highlighted tile. All it does is check if the grid position and the click position matches the highlighted tile's position. Also, add a get highlighted tile position, which is called when you want to place or interact with an object on that tile. Lastly, the bool is tile obstacle, which was called in the A star script checks if the grid position contains an obstacle by seeing if there's a collider at that position. Looking at the obstacle tile map now, once again, make sure you're using unity maps, and for the variables, we'll have a private tile map called tile map and a private hash set called obstacle tile map position set to a new hash set. In the awake method, it ensures that the tile map is set and it initializes a collection of positions where the obstacle tiles are located within the map. Moving down to initialize obstacle tiles, it clears the collections of obstacle tile positions and scans the entire map to find and record the positions of all the tiles that are not empty. It then stores the positions in a collection for a quick access later. And lastly, the isTile obstacle method. This method helps you check if a given world position corresponds to an obstacle tile within the tile map. It converts the world position to a grid position and then it confirms if it matches any of the obstacle tile map position that it was stored in. The last script we'll be looking at is the character movement. We'll add a public enum at the top called move direction, which will be up, down, left, and right. And inside our grid movement, have a private float called move speed, a private float called vector2, a private vector2 called grid size, 
a reference to the obstacle tile map called obstacle tile map, as well as a reference to the tile selection. I have a private vector 2 called target position, another private ball called is movement, and the move direction called current direction, which is set to down. For the update method, we'll just call the handle movement input. And in here, it constantly checks if the user and input handles cause the character movement. When the player clicks on a tile and it's not an obstacle, it will initiate a pathfinding process to reach the clicked location. For the find path to target position, this finds a path from the character's current position to the clicked target tile and sets the character in the motion of the optimal path. Next onto the I enumerator move along path, this method smoothly moves the character along the desired path. It takes care of moving through their waypoints in the path and having the character stay in between them. Lastly, the move towards target. This method determines the character facing the direction, ensuring that the target faces the right way when moving. That pretty much covers all the scripts. Back in Unity, make sure you have the proper game objects, scripts, etc. attached to the inspector. You can obviously copy some variables, but make sure to double check each slot. When I press play, you can see the player being able to hover over tiles, and when pressing the left mouse button, the player will calculate and move towards the location, using the 8 star pathfinding method to figure out which way is the quickest. Anyways, that is all for this video. If you do want the project, you can go ahead by subscribing to my Patreon down below. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or just want to join my community, my Discord will also be down in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!